Welcome to True Crime Garage. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, thanks for listening. I'm your host, Nick, and with me as always, behind the glass, he's living La Vida Loca. He is the captain. I got dumps like a truck, 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 thighs like what, what, what? It's good to be seen, and it's good to see you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for telling a friend. This week, we are very happy to be featuring a great beer called Beer Drinking is Not a Crime. Garage grade, four and a half bottle caps out of five. This is a great beer. In fact, it's a crime not to drink it. Not a Crime is a double dry hopped, double IPA featuring Nelson and Citra hops. And there's a good amount of orange and orange peel taste here. All right, let's give thanks and praise to some of our good friends First up, we have Linnea in Parts Unknown. Also in Parts Unknown, we have Sherry, and we have Aaron, who wants us to feature Coors Light, or CL Smooth, as she calls it. And a big shout to Autumn in Lake St. Louis, Missouri. Next up, we have Sarah and Brandon from West Virginia. And a big We Like Your Jib to Kelly in Eudora, Kansas. Here's a big shout out to Jason S., who says we are the best true crime podcast out there. Well, thank you very much. That's right. And last but not least, we have Daisy in Monterey, California. So thanks, everybody, for helping us out with this week's set of shows. If you want to fill up the fridge for next week's show, go to truecrimegarage.com and click on the donate button. We got plenty of shirts back in stock, so check out the store page if you haven't bought a t-shirt yet. What are you waiting for? Go to truecrimegarage.com, and that's enough of the business. All right, everybody, gather around, grab a chair, grab a beer. Let's talk some true crime. Police are seeking information on a man missing since February 24th, 2019. Husband and father, Tyler Davis, was last seen in Columbus, Ohio. Tyler was a guest at the Hilton Hotel, located at the Easton Town Center. He is Caucasian, 5 foot 10 inches tall, 170 pounds, with brown hair and brown eyes. Tyler has a noticeable birthmark on his right arm. He was last seen outside of the hotel, wearing a blue and green flannel shirt, blue jeans, and black and white Nike shoes. If you have any information, please contact the Columbus Police Department at 614-645-4545. Well, this week, Captain, we have a unique situation. We have the opportunity to speak with a victim. Her name is Brittany Davis, and her husband has been missing since February of this year. We were notified of this pretty early on after his disappearance because we live in the area where he was last seen. Mm -hmm. And we do this kind of thing. You know, this is our gig, as some would call it. But we've been asked to help, and now we are asking everybody else for their help. Please listen to the shows and we will post Tyler's picture at truecrimegarage.com. Please go there, look at Tyler's picture. Maybe you have some information that could help assist in this investigation. So let's go to the interview with Brittany Davis, Tyler Davis's wife. Brittany, thanks for joining us. Can we start off by you telling us who is Tyler Davis and how did you guys meet? I met Tyler in 2013. He was actually my boss for a long time. 
he managed just like a local franchise business that I'd worked at for a while. And um, I knew him for a couple years, and we were really good friends before we started dating. And so we met in 2013, and we actually didn't get together until like 2000, the beginning of 2016. You know, we were really good friends. And then we ended up having Aaron at the end of 2007, or the summer of 2017. And then we got married at the end of 2017. We had just celebrated our first wedding anniversary in November. Now, you and Tyler are not from the Columbus area. Why were you guys going to Easton? And where are you from? Okay, so we actually live in Wilmington, Ohio. We usually, we do stuff, like, I mean, with a young kid, and, you know, he works a lot. He works usually, like, 60 hours a week. We don't really do much. Like, we never, like, go out with our friends or anything like that, you know. Um, We're both, like, pretty much homebodies. I play a lot of video games. So, three times a year, and we do it on my birthday, his birthday, and our anniversary. We will take Aaron to Tyler's parents' house for like the night or like a day or two and we'll just like go spend time together. Uh, we went up to Easton actually for my birthday. My birthday is on February 24th and we got there on the 23rd. There wasn't really a plan. Like we knew, we knew we were going to like go somewhere for, and we knew we were going to go somewhere in Columbus for my birthday. We didn't know exactly where, like what area, uh, the only reason we picked Columbus actually is because Tyler's from Circleville and that's where his parents still live. And it's a lot closer, you know, from Circleville to Columbus and for us to go, because we usually go to like Cincinnati and stuff. Like we usually go a completely different direction, but that was the only reason we picked Columbus. So now that you guys know you're heading to Columbus, let's start going into the details of that day. Let's start by you guys leaving the house. Okay, so um, Tyler actually worked, and that's another factor that I think plays into this, is he was really exhausted. That week, he'd worked six straight, six days straight, just so he could have Saturday and Sunday off together, like the way a schedule works. And um, so he had worked, you know, six, 11, 12-hour shifts straight for six days, and um, he was really exhausted. He didn't get home Friday night until around um, 3.30 in the morning. He usually closes. And his work is about a 30-minute drive anyway, so it usually pushes him getting home super late. So so what time did he get home from work? He got home Friday night. It was technically Saturday morning around like 3.30, like 3, 3.30 a.m. And, um, you know, we just like stayed up for a little while. We just hung out. Um, he played his video game. I was still trying to pack everything for like us to go because when you have a baby, it's 17 bags. And I was just getting stuff ready. And I think we went to bed around like 5.30, 6 a.m. We have a really weird schedule just because of the hours we work. Like, we both work night. Like, I bartend. You know, he's a nighttime manager. So we were actually super late. Uh, we had overslept. We were supposed to be on Stringtown Road to meet his parents at, like, noon. And we didn't even wake up until 12.30 on Saturday. So we got, like, a really late start to the day. We didn't sleep very much. We were super late. We got to, me and Tyler and Aaron left our house um, probably around 1, and we got up to Stringtown Road. We had, like, lunch with his parents at, like, the Texas Roadhouse probably around, we left around, like, 3, 30, 4 o'clock maybe. And, you know, we had just pretty much had lunch and handed Aaron off to his parents. And... After we left, me and Tyler stopped at there at like the Speedway right off of 71 right there. We just got some gas, you know, some coffee. And then from there, we went to Easton. It was straight there. We checked in around, I literally think I have it. It was exactly at 458. So once we checked into the hotel, we just kind of laid around for a couple hours. You know, as we both took a shower, we waited on one of our friends, um, a really good friend of Tyler's is from the area, and he was going to come out with us that evening. We actually were supposed to meet a couple more of my friends that live up in Columbus, but nobody else ended up being able to make it out, so it just kind of turned into the three of us. You and Tyler are just hanging out in the hotel room, and Tyler's friend is going to come and meet you guys at the Hilton at Easton. 
Yes, he so he lives um, in the area. He doesn't live too far. Um, you know, he is living in Columbus. So he drives to the hotel. Uh, he comes up to our room, and we just literally, I was getting, like, I had just taken a shower. I was getting dressed. We just kind of sat there and, like, hung out and talked for a couple hours, we just watching some really trashy TV and just talked for a minute before we had headed out for the evening. So once you leave the Hilton, what's the first place you guys go to and how do you actually get there? So we left the hotel probably around 8.30, I'd say. And we actually, because me and Tyler had plans for the next day to like, you know, go shopping, we had like a couple's massage plans, like, like scheduled and, um, you know, we're going to get lunch and stuff before we had to go get Aaron. But so we, when we left the hotel, we just kind of walked around. That was the first time I'd ever been there. It's really big and there are a lot of stores. So we're just kind of seeing like the lay of the land, really, like which, like what kind of stores they had. And we probably walked around for a good 40 minutes. Um, we walked into a couple of little shops and stuff. And then the first place we went to was Bar Louie. And we got to Bar Louie. Uh, a little after nine, I'd say probably like nine twenty, nine thirty. Um, and it was just you know me and Tyler and John, we just sat at a bar table and hung out and each had like one or two drinks. I think from Bar Louie, we went directly over to Adobe, and that is like right beside it, inside of like the inside the mall. Do you have any clue how many drinks you had or how many drinks Tyler had at either one of these bars? So I know when we left, okay, so let me see if I have this right. Yeah, so we left, We pay, I paid my tab literally at Houston. When Tyler paid the tab at Bar Louie at like 10, 19. And um, there I know I had two drinks. Tyler had half of one drink. Each of us had like, um, like a lemon drop, like a shooter. And then we went over to Adobe, and we had, I know I had three or four drinks, and I know Tyler had three or four more drinks, but, like, when he, he doesn't do, like, mixed drinks, and he doesn't do, he doesn't do beer. Like, if he drinks, it's just, like, a straight shot, like, just one shot, and he'll just, like, sip on it for, like, a minute, you know what I mean? He doesn't really, he doesn't, he doesn't like beer. He just drinks, uh, he's been on like a Tito's kick here lately, but, um, he doesn't like drinks, like he likes to drink scotch, like on the rocks, that type of stuff. You know what I mean? So it's not like he like downs drinks constantly. You guys go to Bar Louie, then you head over to Adobe Gila's. What time do you think you left Adobe's? We pay the tab at Adobe at 11.30 PM, but we stay there for a little bit longer because we like finished our drinks. Brittany, are your guys' bank accounts, you and Tyler's bank accounts, connected to each other? So we actually, we do not. So Tyler has, like, his bank account, and I've just, we've just never gotten around to, like, me getting on it, and then I have my bank account. But I have access to his account. Like, I have all of the bank records from that night, like, how much money we spent, how many times the card was swiped. Well, and that's how I literally know exactly what time, like, we paid our bill and stuff like that. So you guys are a young couple. You guys are coming up from Wilmington to the Easton area for your birthday. Tyler has worked six days in a row, over 10 hours each day. But what is the vibe of the night? So it was really like, it was like a, we were having, like, that's the thing. Though. Like, this is the first time, like, on this, when all this stuff, that was the first time me and Tyler had ever drank together in a bar, ever. And it was like, it was, we were having a fun time, you know what I mean? Like, we were out for my birthday, like, it was my birthday, I was trying to be a wingman for our friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, we were just laughing. Everybody was having a fun time. Like, we were just having fun. So, like, after we had had our drinks at Adobe, it was my idea to go to the dollhouse because by that point, I was a little tipsy. I had never been to an establishment of that sort before. So, I was just like, yeah, whatever. We don't have anything to do right now type of deal thing. We go back to the Hilton because our friend had ordered um, an Uber. It's about like a 20-minute drive, I think, like 15, 20-minute drive, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and me and Tyler walk inside. We use the restroom before we get an Uber, like at the Hilton. You know, so we get into, um, we get into the Uber and we go to the dollhouse. 
And for our listeners that are not from Columbus, the Dollhouse is a gentleman's club. Yes, it is. With a bar. So now you're at the Dollhouse. It's your idea to go there. Tell us what happens at the Dollhouse. Okay, so, you know, uh, me and Tyler and our friend, we walk in and, you know, we, like, pay our cover or whatever. We walk up to the bar. We, like, get a drink. And, you know, we're just, like, sitting there talking. We got to the dollhouse around 12.45 a.m. And this is, like, the early, early morning of February 24th. But this is actually pretty early in the night for you guys because you guys are on a different schedule than most people. Right. A lot of people don't understand because a majority of people have their schedules, like, you know, nine to five. But, like, when you work nights for literally years, it just, you kind of turn, you turn into nocturnal. Like, literally, my son's bedtime is midnight because of the way our schedule set up. Just so Tyler can actually see Aaron and not have to go four or five days without seeing him just because of the schedule, if that makes sense. And just so our audience is clear, we're doing this interview at midnight. So this is your guys' schedule. Definitely. Um, we've we've always been on nighttime time schedule. You know, he's a closing manager. Um, I don't even think they don't even close until midnight. So they got to actually close. And then most of the time, he doesn't get home between 2.30 and 3.30 in the morning. You know what I mean? And I, I'm a bartender. I don't even call last call until 1 a.m. So that puts me getting home at 3. So we've always just been on kind of like a different schedule than everybody else. So now you're at the Dollhouse, the Gentleman's Club. What are you drinking? What is Tyler drinking? Yeah, so I drew, I was drinking Bahama Mamas. I drink Bahama Mamas all night. I like coconut. Our friend was actually, who was he drinking? Captain and Cokes. And then, I think it was Diet Coke, actually. I don't remember. But then, um, yeah, no, Tyler just stuck to his usual. He would just get like, he would just get like a shot. A shot of Tito's with vodka. Or he'll get tequila. Um, I would say we probably each had like three or four more drinks while we were at the dollhouse. What is the vibe of the group? Why you guys are in the dollhouse? I don't know. It was pretty cool. You know, met a couple really nice girls, Mm -hmm. super lovely ladies. Um, It was, I don't know. It was just really, it was like, definitely it was like a first time experience experience for me so it was just like I was kind of just taking it in type deal thing um you know we me and Tyler just sat at the bar for a while and we were just like talking um we bought one of the girls a drink at that point I think uh, our friend he kind of just like you know he probably felt like the third wheel because it was just like me and Tyler and then him so he was just kind of off like doing his own thing you know like we were having a fun time when it seems also in a gentleman's club that the females working will be extra nice to any female customers. Yeah, I, I apparently they really will go, like, I guess couples is like a thing that they, like, direct towards. I don't know. I learned a lot of stuff about strip clubs after that experience and, like, talking because that was the first time I'd ever been to one. But I thought it was. I thought it was really funny, though, because there were a lot of people that were like, oh, why did you go to a strip club? Like, whose idea was that? And I was like, oh, mine. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was just having a fun time. Was there anything odd or anything that sticks out about your experience at the dollhouse? So there were a couple of really weird things that, well, like, at the time, I didn't think it was weird. But now, now I think about it. And obviously, it's just because, like, everything that happened. But a couple things popped out to me that I thought were odd at the strip club. So I remember at one point, um, you know, me and Tyler had just ordered a round of drinks, and we, like, went out front to smoke a cigarette. And uh, when we were walking out front, the guy saw me. He was like, no. He's like, you can't take this out front. And I just kind of looked around. I was like, I mean, as a bartender, like, you know the rules. You're not supposed to leave your drink anywhere. You're not. It's just like, don't do it. It's bad, especially in a place where I've never been here before. I don't know these people. I am I live an hour and a half away. You know what I mean? But I did. I did a no-no, and I sat it down. I couldn't see it. I walked out front. Me and Tyler did. Um, we smoked, smoked cigarette. Uh, we came back inside. Uh, I grabbed my drink. I took a drink of it. It was still pretty full. I took a drink of it, and then I was like, hey, I'm going to go to the restroom. And then I handed him my drink. He's like, okay. I'm going to go back to our seats, whatever. So I went to the restroom, and I wasn't in there very long at all. And by the time I got out, I noticed all the lights had been flipped. 
like they turn all the lights on. And I was like, okay, so like, I guess it's time to go, you know? So like, as I'm walking out of the bathroom, there's like a really big wall and I'm kind of walking around like, you can't see people, if that makes sense. Like if somebody's exiting the bathroom where you can't see them coming out until they like turn a corner. And I like hear Tyler and like getting into an argument with the bouncer and there he was like, the bouncer was like, you guys got to go. It's time for you to go. He's like, no man, like we're leaving. I just got to wait on Brittany. He was like, my wife's in the bathroom. I'm like, let me just get Brittany. And he was like, no, no, you got to get out of here right now. He was like, we will leave as soon as she comes. Like she's in the bathroom and she's going to be out any second. And then I was like that, like I hear them. And as I was at that point, I'm like turning the corner and I was like, look, there she is. He's like, we're out of here. We're leaving. And the guy's like, okay, cool. But like the guy kind of was, I don't know if he thought, you know, he could have just thought they were lying. Who knows? But, um, so, you know, we all walk outside and I look at my phone and it's about to die. I was like, Tyler, what's your phone on? He's like, it's almost dead. And he didn't have like the Uber, like Tyler doesn't have the Uber app on his phone. Like I have it. And then our friend had it on his phone. So we're standing out there for a minute and I was like, Hey, like, can you order us an Uber? And he's like, yeah, totally. And we ended up sitting out there for probably about 20, 25 minutes. Like by this point, everybody else was like clearing out. We we're just like waiting on our Uber. One of the, uh, one of the girls came outside. She gave himself like a bottle of water. Um, we sat there like waiting on our Uber or whatever. So you're doing a real good job of getting the timeline from Brittany leading up to Tyler going missing. The thing that is interesting here is, I mean, we're really hearing very specific times. And I love that knowing the timeline because we have her, her, because we have the bank statements that say what time they are leaving these different establishments as they go about their night, having a good time. Well, they have the bank statements, plus they have her phone log and Tyler's phone log. And so by collecting all that information, it really gives us more pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. And one thing I should point out here is there is a name that we are kind of removing from this interview as we go along. Right. Because we've been asked to do so. So if you hear what sounds to be a glitch, it's really we've just had to edit out that name. Like we said before, this story hasn't been covered a lot, but since Brittany has been trying to get interviews with anybody that will listen, and she has a lot of information, she has these timelines. So on one hand, she understands that she it makes her seem almost as if she knows too much information and that she is trying to cover something up. But on the other hand, this is somebody that is trying to put as many pieces out there so we get answers. Yeah. So the friend's name we have been asked not to include, and it's just natural speak for Brittany to include his name when telling us about the events of that night. Now, in regards to some of the things that she referenced as being, might be strange regarding some of their stops along the way. Right. So the dollhouse is, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare to call that a, a tough place or a rough place. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been there a couple times and felt very comfortable. I can see how maybe somebody, a first timer or somebody not from the area, they might have thought a few things were strange, but regarding bars in that area and really Columbus as a whole, one thing that I've noticed is that there's no patio. Well, you know, I haven't been to the dollhouse in years, but last time I was there, there's no patio. Mm -hmm. So, they are very strict on not allowing people to go out the front door or side door with a drink. You are supposed to drink that drink, consume that drink within those four walls. They can't have you hanging out in front of the establishment, sipping on a drink while you smoke a cigarette. So that's not really out of bounds. One thing I will say in the dollhouse's defense regarding this having lived, I lived like a mile and a half from there for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. So, one thing that would happen is nice that you were able to live close to your work. <laughs> well, one thing that, that I noticed from time to time is that there would be a police car, especially like on a weekend or very late hours. Yeah. They, they kind of, it's the dollhouse is back in almost what I would call a court. And so they would just go off the main road there 
and do a quick loop around. Well, the police don't want to see anybody outside of that bar with a drink either. So well, and it's funny too, because the, the term loop around is my go-to stripper move. <laughs> well, it's, so what I'm getting at is I think that it's just a bar rule. It's, it's part of their alcohol license and it has to be strictly enforced. And then on top of that, regarding the situation of Tyler and his friend arguing with the bouncer or the guy working the door about them, Hey, you got to leave. Mm-hmm. I think most people from Columbus will tell you, and I know this varies by city and by establishment, but I think most people will tell you that here I typically notice what I call a hard out for the night. When oh, it's yeah. when it's time to leave, there's a lot of bars that are not even nice about it. They they are, they will take your drink, you know, and all you want to do is finish your drink that you've paid probably way too much for, and they will take your drink and they really want to push you out the door. Regarding the statement about him saying, well, we got to wait for Brittany. We're waiting for my wife. We're waiting for Brittany. I'm sure these door guys, bouncer guys hear stories like that all the time. They don't want guys waiting around for girls, especially if they happen to be people that are working there Mm -hmm. or suspect that they're talking about somebody working there. So I kind of get what's going on and she's painting a very good picture leading up to this, uh, getting into an Uber and I'm guessing heading back to the Eastern area for the night. And listening back to the interview for the first time, you 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 said that she kind of sounds nervous to you. Yes, and and I get that vibe too, but I I get it more just being nervous, wanting to say the right thing, wanting to come off a certain way. I I don't I don't get the feeling that she's like nervous because she's hiding something. No, 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 me neither. And I think you hit it right on the head there. It's, it's really just a nervousness when you know that you're talking mm-hmm. and that you're being recorded and that people are going to hear it. Not so much worried about or nervous about what you are saying. Everything I'm hearing, it's, it's details, it's specific, and it's the truth. Well, and, and, her, and her defense on the nervousness, I mean, she did have to listen to my silky pipes. It's hard to find qualified candidates, and it takes a long time, and sometimes there's too many applicants. But there's one place you can go where hiring is simple, fast, and smart. A place where growing businesses connect to qualified candidates. That place is ZipRecruiter.com slash garage. ZipRecruiter sends your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards, but they don't stop there. With their powerful matching technology, ZipRecruiter scans thousands of resumes to find people with the right experience and invites them to apply to your job. As applications come in, ZipRecruiter analyzes each one and spotlights the top candidates so you never miss a great match. ZipRecruiter is so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. And right now, our listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address. ZipRecruiter.com slash garage. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash garage. That's Z-I-P-R-E-C-R-U-I-T-E-R.com slash garage. ZipRecruiter. It's the smartest way to hire. Robinhood is an investment app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos all commission-free, while other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade. Robinhood doesn't charge any commission fees, so you can trade stocks and keep all your profits. Plus, there's no account minimum deposit needed to get started, so you can start investing at any level. The simple, intuitive design of Robinhood makes investing easy for newcomers and experts alike. And here's some things that I love. You can view easy-to-understand charts and market data and place a trade in just four taps on your smartphone. You can also view stock collections such as 100 Most Popular, With Robinhood, you can learn how to invest in the market as you build your portfolio, discover new stocks, track your favorite companies, and get custom notifications for price movements so you never miss the right moment to invest. Robinhood is giving listeners of True Crime Garage a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help you build your portfolio. 
Sign up at garage.robinhood.com. That's garage.robinhood.com. If you are drowning in IRS tax debt, get ready to take down this number and take advantage of new IRS tax forgiveness programs that can help free yourself from IRS collection agencies. The IRS has recently hired private debt collection agencies to start collecting your outstanding taxes. They can already garnish your wages, put liens on your property, and levy your bank account. If you are drowning in IRS tax debt, the people at Civic Tax Relief can help protect you from IRS collection agencies, stop the added fees and wage garnishments, and finally break free from the IRS. Call Civic Tax Relief for free information now. Find out about the Fresh Start program that is now available through Civic Tax Relief. Check out their outstanding four-star reviews from their clients. Civic Tax Relief's special tax hotline can help you discover all the relief programs you qualify for free. Just call 800-601-7780. Don't wait. The consultation is free. The information is free. This call could save you thousands. Call now, 800-601-7780. That's 800-601-7780. Can you tell me anything about the Uber or the Uber driver? Yeah, for sure. So the, um, let me see, I have it right here. So it was a Saturn view. It was a guy, uh, it was a younger guy. Um, am I allowed to say his name? I don't know if I'll get in trouble. Well, we'll just leave his name out. So it was like a red Saturn view. Um, that was a nice, that was a nice car. Uh, it was like an SUV type deal thing. Now what Brittany told me, but she accidentally said their friend's name and he's been getting harassed online, so we're not actually going to use his name. We've just been calling him The Friend. So The Friend sits up front. Tyler sits behind the the Uber driver. Brittany sits behind their friend in, in, in the back seat. So we ended up leaving. We left the, the Uber, picked us up exactly at 3.01 a.m. And we got back to the hill. I remember like getting out of the car and I saw the dashboard and it said 318. But one thing, this is something that I think plays a really big, a really big part in this is the fact that when we did, when we were on our way back, like it was only like a 15, what was it, 17 minutes? Yeah, like a 17 minute ride. And um, Tyler had dozed off in the, in the Uber. And that was really, like, as soon as I noticed he fell asleep, I was like, man, because he's just, he's like one of those people that if he's asleep, I just leave him. I don't like to wake him up. I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, especially if he had been drinking, I just don't like to. Because he wakes up, he gets all crabby and cranky, and it's just like, it's not worth it. You know what I mean? Do you think he fell asleep due to exhaustion, or do you think... It was passed out. I think drunk. it was more exhaustion because he had worked literally like like six, ten to twelve hour shifts straight. And Tyler's one of those people to where like he is he is a night owl, so like most of the time like, when he gets home and it's like, you know, like three AM, like he's not gonna like take a shower and go straight to bed. I mean, I don't think anybody that works weird hours does, you know what I mean? Like he has to wind down just like everybody else and like get off work at five. You know what I mean? Like he eats dinner. Yeah. He like takes a shower, plays his video games, does whatever he wants to do pretty much. And then passes out. You guys get back to the Hilton. You see three eighteen on the dash of the Uber driver's car. And now Tyler's asleep and you have to wake him up. Yes, exactly. So I'm like, and at this point, um, our friend had fallen asleep too. He was passed out too. And I was like, Man, I've never tried to wake him up. So, like, I hit him on the shoulder, and he was, like, popped up. He's like, what's up? And I'm like, cool. So, I got out of the car. I woke up our friend, and I opened the um, I opened the door, and I was just like, how do you want to do this? He's just like, you know, hey, Tyler, like, come on, let's go. And he was like, okay, guys, I'm coming. Just give me a minute. And I'm like, we sat there for a couple minutes, and you could tell, like, the Uber driver by this point was just aggravated, you know what I mean? Like, hey. 
please get the hell out of my car. It's probably, like, it's, like, on this 3.30 in the morning. You know what I mean? Getting Tyler out of the car. And um, when we were getting him out of the car, I, like, grabbed one of his arms. And I was like, hey, let's go. And um, I just grabbed an arm, too. And I was like, hey, like, you know what I mean? Like, well, I get this. Like, he was still asleep. You know what I mean? Like, he literally had, it was like he wasn't even woken up. And when he got out of the car, he was like, what the hell is Like, we're not, where is our ride going? Like, we're not even where we're supposed to be. And I was like, hey, look, what are you like? This is our hotel. Like, our hotel's right here. Like, what are you talking about? And he was just like, in a cranky mood. Like, he was just pissed off. He was just tired. I really, I don't think that any of, anything that was going on there, like, it was not a good mix. You know what I mean? Like, between, like, the fact that we had been drinking, the fact that he was exhausted, the fact that we were in an unfamiliar place. Like, that was just not, it was not a good mixture. So, he was just, he was pissed off. You know, he got out, like, out of the Uber, and he was just like, what the hell, guys? We're not where we're supposed to be, blah, blah, blah. And he just gets, like, just shitty, and he walks away. And I'm like, what the shit? Like, what are, like, where are you going? Like, we're literally supposed to be right here. So I go to follow him, and um, his friend is like, no, Brittany, it's okay. Like, I got it. I was like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah. He's like, yes. Like, don't worry. We'll be right back. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, with that, before before he had left the hotel, we had, we had two room keys. And we didn't know, like, if, like, like, he, like our friend didn't know if he was going to end up, like, passing out on the couch in our hotel room or just, like, going home. You know what I mean? And um, Tyler gave him one of the room keys and he was like, put this in your wallet just in case we get mixed up something or other, you know, we have a room until noon, whatever, if you need to sleep on the couch or something. And then Tyler has one in his wallet. Like, don't worry about it. He's like, just go upstairs. We'll be right there. And he took, like, she handed me the, uh, the room key out of his wallet. And I was like, you know, whatever. Like, you, you got it. Cool. So I went upstairs. I wasn't up there for long. I plugged in my phone. My phone was dead. I was just really just trying to call Tyler. Well, you're up in the hotel room at this point, but where is Tyler and his friend? They never, like, Tyler never walked, like, physically, like, we were five feet from the door. He never walked inside after we got out of Uber. Not one time did he step into the doors. He literally, like, got out of Uber, whatever, and then after he started walking, he, I'm trying to, if you were standing in front of the Hilton, he's literally going, like, diagonally to the left like there's a bunch of condos right there and that is the direction he's like walking in like through the parking lot you know what I mean and it wasn't like Tyler walked off by himself and then his friend like he like they went together you know what I'm saying like they dispersed together uh so what are you doing now that you're gone from the situation yeah I plugged in my phone for like I wasn't gone for 10 minutes like I really wasn't even it wasn't even 10 minutes I used the restroom and then I came back downstairs, and I couldn't, I couldn't find, like, either of them. Like, my phone's on, like, 4%. Like, it keeps – it's about to die, and I'm trying to call Tyler. I'm trying to call his friend, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, where are you guys at? And I'm, like, messaging them on Facebook. I'm trying to literally, like, video chat Tyler's Facebook just so I can see, like, if I see, like, a – Storm, like, you know what I mean? If he's walking through Eastern Town Center, if I see something, I notice, and I'm like, oh, he's over here type deal thing. Like, I'm trying to look. He never, he didn't answer me. Um, Tyler called, so Tyler called me at 3.37 a.m. And he was like, you know, I'm sorry. He was like, I'm just walking around the block smoking a cigarette. I'll be right back. I just, I was just a little pissed off pretty much. Like, I was like, okay, you know, whatever, cool. Um. I'll, I'll see you in a few minutes. He's like, yeah, I'll be, I'll be back in a minute. I was like, okay. So it's in, at this point, his friend walks back. And I was like, well, you know, like, where's, where's Tyler at? And he was like, Bernie, I wouldn't worry about it. it. It looks just like he's blowing off some steam. Um, and I was like, well, you know, is everything okay? And he was like, yeah, I just, I really wouldn't worry too much about it. He'll be right back, you know. And he's like, you can't, you can't really get lost here. It's like really, like, look at where you're staying. It's the biggest building, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, well. And then me and, me and him kind of like, at this point, I am, I'm freaking out. Like, what's going on? Where's Tyler? 
why didn't you follow him? You know what I mean? Like, I'm just, I'm going crazy. Well, Tyler fell asleep in the car. Tyler doesn't know this area. Tyler seemed a little confused when he got out of the Uber. This caused for a little alarm. Yeah, and it was, and that was, that was the biggest thing. Like, if he had been awake that whole entire, like, if literally, if he had not fallen asleep in that car, like, I wouldn't, it, it was just kind of like, I mean, I know he was so exhausted. And at the same time, like, I wasn't trying to scream at his friend on the side of the street because it's not like he knew what was going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure he's just like, whatever, dude, you're going to walk right back. You know what I'm saying? Like, And it's pretty late, but this is also roughly around the time you guys normally go to bed. Exactly. It's like, it's, you know, it's like, it's way past time to go to bed, dude. Like, it's, we need, it's time to go to sleep. And, and, you know, he was thinking the same thing too. He's probably like, I don't want to be out here, like, walking around in circles chasing you when we're supposed to be back there. You know what I mean? So you saw Tyler walk towards some condos at Easton, and then he called you at 3.37, and you talked to him for a little bit then. Yeah, he called at 3.37 a.m., and he was just like, um, he sounded like mad. He was like, I'm sorry. He was like, I'm just, I'll be right back. You know, I'm just taking a walk. And out of all of the, like, Tyler has never... Like, you know, even if, like, we had just gotten into an argument, he never just sleeps and walks out and just starts walking. Like, he doesn't do that. Like, don't get me wrong. He might, like, go out back and smoke a cigarette, reevaluate, you know what I mean? Just, like, give it a minute. But he never just, like, takes off walking. Like, I'm the one who leaves. Like, I'm the one who just, like, leaves the situation. Like, he doesn't do that. Now, you said Tyler's phone had low battery while you're leaving the strip club. Now, this is a little bit later. He calls you at 3.37. Does he call you after that? Yes, he does. So um, he calls at 4, a little after 4, 10 in the morning. So this is roughly 30 minutes later from the first call. Literally. So in this whole time, I'm standing like out front of the hotel. I'm just like walking down this way. I'm like, maybe if I go this way and I'm just kind of sitting here to see if like he's going to pop back up. You know what I mean? I'm like, he said he was going to come right back. So. If I go out here, like, I can miss them walking into the hotel. You know what I'm saying? So the call at 410, what does Tyler say to you? Yeah, it's, like, around 410 in the morning, and he was like, I'm sorry. He was like, I see the hotel. I'll be there in, like, five minutes. And I was like, okay. He was like, I'm walking through the woods. I see the hotel. I'll be there in, like, five minutes. And I was like, you're walking through the woods. And a lot of people, when I say that, I have to make sure people know, like, my husband is not an outdoorsy person at all. I'm talking like this man. Plays always, he likes video games. Like, he puts these literally, like, we put Legos together. I have a whole Disney princess castle in there. Like, we play games, and we watch a lot of movies. Like, we're not outdoorsy people. Like, literally, the shoes he has on right now, he bought those in college. He graduated seven years ago. Like, he's not, he doesn't, like, woods to him could be three trees in a circle so at this point you and the friend are outside the hilton yeah like we're standing like we're standing on the corner we're just kind of like waiting for him to you know what i mean to just like walk back up because that's what he said he was like yeah i see it i'll be there in like five minutes and i was like okay cool you know he was like sorry love you i'll be right there i was like okay i'll I'll wait for you like i can come and meet you right now if you want he was like no i see it i'll be right there i'm literally looking at the hotel and the hotel is really really big so like at nighttime that all the lights that they have on it, it's very, very noticeable. It stands yeah. out. Um, so, you know, me and me and his friend were just standing there, you know, waiting for him. And then it's literally as soon as we hung up, like, a few, maybe a minute, maybe one whole minute, Tyler calls me again. And when he calls me, I answered it. And the line stayed open for, like, four seconds. And he didn't say anything. I was like, hello. You know, he didn't say anything. And then it ended. And then when I tried to call him back, it went to voicemail. So I assumed that as soon as he called me, like his son was, he had told me through the night that his son was going to die. Like, you know, when we were waiting on the Uber outside of the dollhouse, like he was like, oh, no, my son's going to die. I don't know how, like the exact percent, but as soon as I tried to call him back from that, like four minute call, his son was dead. And it's been dead ever since. Like I call it. Every day. So what about your battery at this point? Because you said it was pretty low when you got back from the strip club. 
you went up to your room to charge it for maybe 10 minutes. So it's surprising that it's still working at this point. Right. It's on like, oh, it was, it was almost dead. And I was just like still standing out there. And, you know, me and his friend, I'm like, you know, what do I do? We got to go do something. We got to get in the car. We got to go somewhere. We got to go look for him. He's like, Brittany, everything's fine. I really wouldn't worry about it. I'm just like, everything's cool. Like, don't like, he's going to walk up any minute. Um, and he actually headed out at that point. So he was like, I'm going to go. And I was like super, at this point I was really frustrated because I'm in an area. I don't know where I'm at. Literally. I have no clue where I am. I can't find Tyler. He has everything in his pocket. You know what I mean? Like he has all of our bank cards and I'm just sitting there like, what am I, what am I supposed to do? Like, who am I supposed to call? Like I have to call somebody to come and help me because I can't find him. And I'm freaking out. And me and him get into an argument on the street. And I think, I just, I think he really, obviously nobody thinks this is going to happen. You know what I mean? Nobody thinks something like this is going to happen. So I really just think at that point, he was just like, Brittany, it's not a big deal. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's literally just got off the phone with him. He said he's going to be right back. Like, don't worry about it go upstairs. He's going to be walking in soon. Da, 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 da. So, so you don't have the hotel key that Tyler has. You have the one that Tyler gave to his friend. Yes, exactly. So, um, I was like super frustrated at this point. I was just really scared. I didn't know what to do. You know I mean? It's like damn near five in the morning. I didn't know who to call. Like who, I don't know. Any, like I only know a couple people in Columbus and his friend's one of them. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, okay, like what do I do at this point? My phone's about to die. I go inside, and I plug it in, and I called a really good friend of mine. I called Harley, and I was, like, freaking out. Like, I don't know what to do. What am I supposed to do? Where do I go? And she's like, Brittany, I think you should calm down and breathe for a minute. It hasn't even been literally 15 minutes since you talked to him. She's like, I think you should calm down. You know, tell me what happened. What did you guys do? Where did you go? So I told her all this stuff, and I was like, I need you to stay on the phone with me while I go look for him because I don't know where the hell I am. I don't know this area. It's still dark as shit outside. And she's like, yeah, totally. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I let my phone charge decently enough so I could like leave. I don't know how far I was going to go. Um, so it's probably up there for maybe like 25 minutes, like talking to Harley and letting my phone charge. And then after that, I just, I, you know, grab the hotel key and I start walking. And it, it really blew my mind how that place is really busy during the day. Like, there's a lot of traffic. And, I mean, I understand 270s right there, but that whole place is so busy during the day. But at nighttime, I'm talking at, like, this is, like, almost 5 a.m. at this time. It's, like, nobody's there. So your call shows that he calls at 410. You talk, get off the phone, he calls right back. It, that's the four second call. You think his phone went dead at some point you call back and Tyler's not answering because it's going straight to voicemail. So signs that his phone is dead. Oh yeah. So I, yeah. So as soon as, um, you know, we talked to 410, he got off the phone and then, um, I wouldn't say immediately, but pretty like a minute. It was not long. He called me back again and that was when that was like the four seconds. And right. then I called him directly back after the line ended, you know, would like whoever, but I hit a button. I don't know. I called him directly back and it went straight to voicemail then. And then the next call that you made is to your friend, Harley. Yeah. So I called Harley and she stayed on the phone with me while I let it charge for a minute. And then, um, I just, I just start walking and like, you see, it's pretty well lit at nighttime. And at this point, like I didn't even walk into the town center. Because I saw him go off in this direction. So that was the direction I started walking to. You know what I mean? So I'm yeah. like walking down like the main drag at first. And then I'm still talking to her. And I walk down a couple of the streets. But like I was, just walk I was just walking. And there were a couple spots that I hit that it got. Like there were no more street lights. That there were no more. Because I had to walk so far down. Like it was just black. And. At that point, I would just, I turned around because I was by myself. So what happens next? I look at my phone and my phone's on the bed and I'm like a mile 
I'm like on the other, I'm on the completely other side of Easton. And I'm like, Carly, you know, I'm why I walk back to the hotel to plug my phone in. I'm going to try to get a hold of, see if Tyler called any of his friends. Um, I don't really, I don't really know what to do, you know? And she's like, Brittany, I think you just need to go back and just calm down. I'm sure he's, he's probably there right now, Brittany. You don't even know. He could be asleep right there right now. And I was like, yeah, that's true. So I, you know, I walked back. He wasn't there. I plugged in my phone. I got off the phone with Harley. So then at this point, I just started calling. I started calling everybody. Like, I called all of his friends. I called anybody and everyone that I could think of that he would call. You know what I mean? Did Tyler get a hold of anybody? Did Tyler try to contact anybody? And nobody talked to him. Um, so then um, one of my, one of Tyler's really good friends, um, one of our good friends, his name's Adam. He was our roommate for a couple years in Wilmington. And uh, right before I had Aaron, he actually like got this, got a new job, and him and his fiance moved up to Columbus. So I called Adam, and I was like, "Look, this is the situation. Like, I don't. Can you help me? Like, I don't know what to do. Like, where do I go? You know what I mean?" And he was like, "No, I'll be there. I'll be there in ten minutes, ten fifteen minutes." And I was like, "Cool." So Adam shows up to the hotel. And he's like, you know, pretty much like, what what happened? What did you guys do? Was everything fine? Did you guys have a fun night? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, like, everything was really fine. Like, we had a really good time. You know what I mean? Like, there was no problems. Like, nobody was arguing about anything. Like, it was a good time. And then he just kind of, like, walked off. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, he probably, Bernie, he could have, he could have passed out on a bench somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, he could have just literally fell asleep someplace. And I was like, okay. And so let's be clear with the audience about the confrontation. This is when the Uber driver is dropping you off and Tyler is asleep and seems a little confused. Yeah, that's what it was. Like he was just like still literally asleep in the back of the car and he was just so tired. And like I said, you know, from he, he was just exhausted and then it didn't help that we had been drinking that night. And so by the time he did get out, he was just, I don't even know what word I would Rumpy. use. Like, yeah, I was cranky. He was just grumpy. He was just like, I don't want to do this right now. Like, I don't want to deal with this type of deal thing. So now you and Tyler's former roommate, Adam, comes, picks you up in his car. You guys are driving around in the early morning of the 24th, February 24th, at Easton Town Center. Yeah, so he's pretty much like, okay, Brittany, like, you know, tell me where you guys live. Let's go around here. And at this point, it's like, it's like daylight. You know what I mean? And it's already, like, Easton's already packed. Like, and it blew my mind because it was so early, but the place had already been super busy. So we drive around Easton, you know, go everywhere for about, like, an hour. We're just driving around looking for places and all these different things. Uh, one thing about Tyler is he's one of those people that if, like, all of his numbers of, like, phone numbers, he doesn't have any number memorized. So if his phone's dead and he has, like, somebody else's phone to, like, call someone, like, he's not going to know what the number is to even call you. You know what I mean? I was like, well, Adam was like, well, Bernie, you know, he could be at the hotel right now. Like, we don't know. We've been gone for, like, 45, 60 minutes, like, like an hour. And I was like, yeah, that's true. So we go back to the hotel. We walk straight up to the and he's not there. I write down my phone number, and I stick it right beside the phone in our hotel room. And then we... Get a lot of our hotel room in the Hilton. It's really, really big. There are a lot of meeting rooms, like convention area. Like this thing is huge. So me and Adam are literally walking around any and every single possible room that's open. Do you know if they have video footage of the front lobby of the Hilton at Easton? They do have video footage of the front lobby, but we weren't even in the lobby when all this stuff had happened. Right. You're not hanging out in the lobby, but you're. are you going through the lobby to get to and from your room oh yeah definitely so with your story they should be able to line up you going to and from your room with that footage and you guys are on the fourth floor yeah no we were on the fourth floor and it, like th at this point i'm just like me in my head i was really i was like oh my gosh he's gonna walk back into this hotel room and he's gonna ask me why the hell i called adam and asked adam to come help me you know what i mean like he's gonna be like Remy, why did you do that like that's not that big of a deal. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, oh, my gosh, he's going to be so mad at me because I called Adam. And I'm making this a big deal out of nothing because he's just going to walk in at any moment. You know what I mean? 
So, you know, me and Adam, we look everywhere. We go back up to the hotel room, and I'm like, okay, what do I do now? I was like, literally, I have no idea what to do. And he was like, Bernie, you need to call his parents. Like, it's time to call his parents. Okay, a couple of things here, Captain. Now, you did this interview, and you've done a great job doing it, but I have a couple questions for you, okay? Mm-hmm. So, one, provided the description given to us about what Tyler was last wearing. So, we have a flannel shirt, blue jeans, black and white Nike shoes, and as Brittany says, these shoes are probably pretty old by this time. Right. Seven years old or so. Yeah, I'm looking at the weather report for the 24th of February. I'm seeing a temperature of like 29 degrees around the time that he's last seen. He's not dressed for that is one thing that kind of jumps off the page immediately to me that I don't know how long somebody would want to venture out on their own walking around in that kind of temperature. But at the same point, we do all know people that don't seem to, you know, I got a couple buddies, they never get cold. Right. <laughs> like the dudes that wear shorts when it's winter time. <laughs> um, so we don't know if Tyler was that kind of person or is that kind of person, but it seems awfully cold for me out walking around at that time. I'm not going to lie. The other strange thing here too, to me is the friend leaving. Yeah. Very strange. So correct me if I'm wrong, but the way that I'm hearing this is that by this point, there's been three phone calls, one at 337, one at 410, and then a third call that take, takes place very shortly after the 410 a.m. call. And possibly more that have been missed. I, I haven't seen a call log, but because we also have the call at 410 where she actually talks to him, and then another call at 411, that's the four-second call where he doesn't say anything. Phone gets called, cut off. She claims that then she calls back, so... 412 mm-hmm. and that's when his phone starts going right to voicemail assuming that the phone is dead at that point so what i would say there is at 4 11 a.m he's officially missing in my in my mind yeah but here's what's weird is part of me goes well maybe his friend is just tired at this point i mean it's four o'clock mm-hmm. that's pretty late for somebody that's on a normal schedule and yeah. I don't know what the friend's schedule is, but let's just assume that it's normal. So that's pretty late. At this point, he might just be tired of the charade. But No, I, I, I get it, but Brittany's been very specific so far and very mm-hmm. detailed in a lot of the answers. And what I almost expected to hear when his friend checked out, I expected there to be some kind of almost a confrontation between the two of them where there's... You know, I can't be here all night long. I can't just keep waiting around and front. You know what I mean? Some well, kind of I, yeah, I think back and kinda, forth. I think she kind of talks about that a little bit. Okay, but it's I again. That's a little unclear. I mean, there's a lot of information that I think that she's trying to process. Mm-hmm. And with talking to her, one of the things that she said multiple times is that there's all these pieces of the puzzle that she keeps going over and over in her head and trying to. It's just like the the scene at the the strip club, you know. You know, Tyler finishes my drink. Was there something in the drink? You know, and that's something she didn't think about for weeks. Mm-hmm. But she's trying to put together these uh, pieces of the puzzle. But I, I do find it very strange. I mean, if my friend, you know, if if the wife of a friend seemed calm. At the time, like, oh, he's going to be back in a couple seconds, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to head out. Not so not so b- big of a deal. But if the person seems pretty stressed out, and I would assume that if he calls you and then you, and then you get a blank call back, you know, a four-second nothing but silence call, and then you call back and the phone's dead, I would be a little worried at that point. And so I think as a friend, I would not want to leave my friend's wife there and until I saw him and once I saw him, I go, okay, you know, I'm out of here. Right. And, but as you said, you know, it may have been extremely late for him. He may be going off the fact that, Hey, that, that quick call back that went dead was either a, a butt dial or 
or this is Tyler, he's walking, he's making his way back to the hotel. Those were what we're told Tyler says. I'm returning shortly. And the other thing, too, I guess that we have to factor in is the friend is not really is not leaving Brittany just stranded out in the middle of nowhere. Right. She's in front of the hotel. That's a big, bright hotel mm. with staff that are still working at that time. I mean, she could be what she's she steps away from walking into the hotel lobby. So it's not like she's out in the middle of nowhere here. Right. The, the other thing, though, that I want to clear up because I'm a little uncertain about this. It sounds to me that that at the earlier part of the night, they have two hotel keys, but we got three people. So Tyler has one. The friend has one. Brittany does not have one. But at some point, she receives the hotel key from Tyler's friend. Yeah. So, so what am I to assume? Uh, what I'm questioning here is when the friend returned to the hotel, does he use a, a, a key card to enter the room or is he just showing up? He has no key card now because Tyler is out wandering around with, with the key card. Well, no, I think what happens is when they return that she gets the key card from the friend mm. because basically the reason why they gave him the key key card was just in case they got separated mm -hmm. you know we're a couple we're not gonna you know we're not getting separated right right and like she said she was trying to be a wingman for this guy so he was you know out looking for you know a female friend mm -hmm. so uh if they did get separated well heck if you can't make it home you have a, you have a key to the room you're welcome to crash on the couch Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me that once the exchange happened, that somehow she got the key from the friend and then she went up and, and charged her phone. But to me, and I know, like, I don't mean to throw shade, but at the same time, Brittany's trying to take all these pieces and, and you'll hear it in her story a lot, like going back over something because she's looking at notes. She's saying, Oh no, well this also happened. Oh, and here's this other thing that happened. And she's mm -hmm. trying to remember everything because she does think it's important to get as much information out there. Cause she knows that a lot of these cases are there's leads by people just sitting around and 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 going over these cases at home. Mm -hmm. And when you're a month and a half out and there's no answers and there's no leads, you start getting desperate for anything. But well, and you question every little thing. Yeah. You, you wonder about every little thing. I have a difficult time with the the battery charging of the phone and the battery life. A lot of that stuff doesn't add up to me. You know, it, it seems like the phone is constantly dead, but there's phone calls being made. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, but again, it could be as simple as she returned back to the room at some point that she doesn't remember. You know, returning back to the room to get a a, a charge on the phone. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more to dive into because, like, like we said, at this point, you know, whether it's calling a friend to come search around and call your other friend because you're freaking out, that's not such a big deal. But once you once you decide that you have to call his parents, once you decide that you have to call the cops, then uh, this this is becoming very serious yes it has and a quick reminder before we finish up today check out all of our old episodes they're on the stitcher app and check out our other show off the record on stitcher premium join us back here in the garage tomorrow until then be good be kind and don't litter